Hey, Jerry. Hey, Trish. Come on, hey. Hey. Hi, Doris. How are you? Get down when they see you. I don't want to be seen. I just want to be. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a pretty sight. <laughs> you need a haircut, Dan. Oh, no. So do you. <laughs> well, I volunteered to cut it for him, but I don't know why he won't let me. <laughs> she just wants to be heard and not seen, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Derek, your dad gets to go home today? Yep, he's home. Good deal. Yep, I brought him home just a little bit ago. So I'm actually camping. I'm actually looking out the window right now at the beautiful hills of Kentucky. Oh, oh. All right. All right, Dan. <laughs> so I got him here, and he's settled in, and I jumped on here to do class, so. But anyway, how are y'all doing tonight? We're good. Good. What's up, Dan? How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Say hello to Aunt Trish. There's hey, Doris. Hey, kitty. Hey there. How are you, Ginger? <laughs> good. Got a good girl. You're Dan's favorite cat. <laughs> That's the only cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're experimenting tonight with something a little different. We're going to, um, I went live on Zoom and then switched and then streamed it over on Facebook so that everybody that gets on Facebook can see all of our lovely faces. Oh, smile big for him. <laughs> I tried to go, I tried to go YouTube live as well and split it off, but uh, I have a logo on my shirt and anytime you have a logo on your shirt, YouTube won't let you go live. Oh, uh, wow. Well. So the YouTube people tonight will not get a, um, a class until after this one's over. <clears throat> so it's funny because any if you set up like this and they see any kind of writing right here, they've shut it down. So I was like, well, I'm not sitting here without a shirt on during tip class. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, my brother Tom Bob, Tom, Bob, whatever your name is. I answer by a lot of things. <laughs> Everything's good. Just got back from church. Oh, okay, good deal. Do you everything go well with recording? Good. Everybody show up. Um, we had one substitute. You'll be very pleasantly pleased. Good. Well, I know it wasn't me, so. <laughs> oh, no, we've redone all yours, too. Don't worry about it. I was hoping <laughs> you'd find somebody better. <laughs> Did Clay show up again? Is that what you, is that why? I know he was, he, he became an expert last week at it, so. Uh, no, everybody, um. I can't really give it away. I, I, it'll That's be fine. For, um, opening of the 24th. But it, All right. You'll, Sounds you'll good. Be very pleased. Well, that's great. For those who are on Facebook, uh, just so you know, you are not seeing double or triple or quadruple or anything like that. We are uh, experimenting a little bit tonight with going live from Zoom onto Facebook so you can see everybody that's on Zoom as well. For those who are on Zoom, uh, just so you know, anything you say tonight will be broadcast live over Facebook and can be shared to other people's pages. So just talk away if you want to. <laughs> What's up, Leah Jordan? Still no Mikey? We wanted to hear your voices though. I'm going to have to get them set up with something. I might just find something. <laughs> Bob said he'll fix you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
What's up, Mike? Is that all we get? Oh. Hey, Wendell. Yes, I'm here. Good to see you, man. You as well. Everything Hello, went well, Mr. it sounds like today. What's that? It sounds like everything's going well there today. Everything's going well. He He's home and um, he's a, uh, just as soon as we got home, he was like, change that light bulb and. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's all good he's doing really well I'm, that's good i've been surprised that's good as a matter of fact that's yesterday he after his surgery was over he wanted to know if he even had surgery he said have i even had surgery he was <laughs> no pain or anything so but well, he's good. doing good that's good yep <clears throat> Gonna give just a few more minutes to let some people get on here on Facebook. If you normally or know somebody that normally joins tw uh, on YouTube, you might want to give them a text message and say, "I will not be live on YouTube. I'll be putting it up afterwards." Um, I was telling them earlier today I have a logo on my shirt, and so anytime you have a logo on your shirt, YouTube won't let you broadcast. So, um, so anyway. We're on Facebook and Zoom tonight. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, mm -hmm. We are getting ready to go back to Matthew chapter five. That's what we're going to be talking tonight is Matthew chapter five. And we're going to be looking at uh, verse uh, number four tonight. That's where we're going to pick up. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 4. If you're on YouTube, thank you for joining us as well. We're glad that you're with us. Um, you are seeing uh, several different people's face uh, on there as we're going through Zoom tonight, just trying out something and seeing how all this works. Um, I, I told some, I thought the other day as I was talking, you know, we'll get everything figured out that needs to be figured out when it's time to go back to the building. So we'll get all the online stuff figured out when it's time to go back to the building. But um, we hope to be continuing to use online stuff even after we're back in the building. I think it's good. I think there's been people that have been reached on here that would never have been in the past. Um, and so it's good to have online um, access as well. So we're thankful for that. Um, but we're going to Matthew chapter five and uh, verse My chair's down. number um, all right so Matthew chapter 5 we're going to be look we've been looking at blessed uh, and the uh, Beatitudes uh, basically is what we've been looking at a study of the Beatitudes and so tonight we're going to continue that um, and talk about the Matthew chapter five and verse number four. Last week, we talked about the um, Matthew chapter five and verse three, blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Um, and so uh, we dealt with some things there that I hope uh, was refreshing to you, but some things as well, I hope that was, that uh, got you thinking a little bit, or maybe uh, looked at something a little bit differently than you have looked at in the past. Um, and so uh, we're just we're, we're glad that we were able to look at that last week. And tonight we're going to look at um, uh, Matthew chapter five and verse number four. Blessed are the poor are the are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Um, and that's where we're going to go tonight. Yes. As we look at this passage of scripture, I think there's some things that maybe uh, surprised the people as Jesus was here on this mountain and he was teaching them. Um, and it, he was trying to teach his disciples about basically living the Christian life and, and having these things in their life and, and saying to them, listen, these are some things that should be a part of uh, your life as well. Um, and so he, he basically said this, and 
also something that I said a couple weeks ago when I did an introduction to this, that um, this passage, these passages that we're looking at in this series of lessons on blessed, it's not just picking one or two out of these things and saying, listen, I have this in my life or I have that in my life. And so God is pleased with that. But instead, what we're doing is, is we're looking at this as Jesus would, as this is a list of things. These are characteristics of things that God would want us to have in our life that he expects us, not just one or two of them, but he wants us to have all these things. And so tonight is no different in the fact that blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Now, again, when you think about this passage of scripture, there's probably some things in here that these people, as Jesus was teaching this, uh, there's probably a few things here that maybe they thought differently about than what Jesus actually taught them. And so I look at this first part in our lessons as kind of like, here's some surprises for these people as they were being taught, as the disciples were being taught by Jesus, uh, some things maybe from their traditional background, uh, maybe some things that they had been taught about different ways and characteristics of life. And so uh, they may have had one way of thinking, and then Jesus comes along and he begins to teach them something else. And so maybe there are some surprises here for these people, or maybe it's even surprises for ourselves as well when we look at this. Um, again, one of the biggest surprises, I think, is the fact that Jesus here is basically saying anyone who mourns is ble could be blessed. Now, the other side of that coin is that a lot of people thought that in this day and time where Jesus was teaching this, a lot of his followers and a lot of people that were watching him and listening him to, to him teach um, had this mindset or this thought that said, you know, they thought mourning was something that was caused by God. It was it was something that was that that God would bring up on them and that that would cause them to mourn many times. That's what they would have thought. And so what Jesus here is trying to teach them is, is no, it's not that. But what it really is, is saying that blessed are those who do mourn and we're going to mourn. And the reason and there's many different reasons why that we may mourn. Um, and, and so we're going to look at that here in just a little bit. But the big thought, the big train of thought for these people at this time, especially those who are being taught by the Sadducees and the Pharisees and those people at this and in Jesus's day, many times they thought that suffering was caused by sin. And so when they would look at people, they would say, well, that person's mourning or that person's suffering because of the sin that they have in their life. I want to give you an example of that. Hold your place at Matthew chapter five, because we're going to come back there. But I want you to go and look by way of example, kind of to illustrate our point here. I want you to go over with me to John chapter nine and read. Um, I want us to look at verse one through verse four of John chapter nine. Uh, look at what the scripture says. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So remember what I just said uh, just a moment ago, that a lot of times during this time that the teaching often was that those who uh, was suffering, uh, they thought that that suffering was caused because of their sin. And John chapter 9 in verse number 1 points that out to us directly. Listen again to what he says. As they passed by, as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And listen to what his disciples. Now, these are the same disciples that he's teaching on the mountain in Matthew chapter 5. The same ones that he's teaching them about. Blessed are those who mourn. Now, listen to what he says in verse number 9. His disciples ask him, Rabbi. Who was it that sinned, this person or his parents, that he was born blind? And so, again, he's suffering. He's got something going on. He's got some kind of physical ailment that's happening in his life. And so, because of that, who sinned, him or his parents? And so, you can kind of begin to see the disciples' train of thought here as they are uh, trying to make sense of all this, as they're going along with Jesus and Jesus' ministry and they're they're learning about different things, and Jesus is trying to teach them. And so what happens is, is they ask this question um, about that. And so, again, it goes back to saying that they thought that suffering was caused by sin. And so now Jesus is saying, blessed are those who mourn. What? Really? What are you talking about? Why would you, why would you say that? And so we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But 
mourners at this time, those who mourned, um, were not to be comforted in the way that we generally understand it. Um, again, this is what this is their thinking back then. This is this is how they this is their train of thought. This is what they've been taught. This is kind of their tradition before Jesus brings this new teaching along. And so they were uh, to to be encouraged to repent and let God remove the source of the discomfort. Now, if you were thinking to yourself, the, that, that kind of line of thinking in the Old Testament where Jesus, or, or in the Old Testament where somebody was accused of, you are suffering because you have sinned, who would come to your mind in the Old Testament? Who would be someone that would come to mind for you? Can you think of someone that was accused of your suffering because you sinned? Do, you, do we remember somebody like that? You're muted, Jerry. How about Job? Job. That's exactly who I was thinking about. Um, in, in Job chapter 2 and verse 11, you remember what Job's friend said, right? Uh, you know, basically in a roundabout way, and some of them even come out and said it, you have sinned, therefore you are suffering. And so again, that illustrates our point for us straight from scripture that many times the teaching was that if you suffered, you are sinning. Therefore, because of that, you would not be comforted in the way that we think about being comforted because you are now repenting or you are now, uh, you know, encouraged to repent because of that suffering. You know, uh, Derek does something or Derek sins in his life. And so because of that, something happens to him. He begins to suffer and the people don't come along and go, listen, it's okay and pat him on the back, but instead they're looking at him and going, you need to repent of your sins if you want the suffering to stop. And so that's exactly what happened with Job and his friends as well. Again, there could be a blessing or comfort offered to one who, who chooses to mourn. That is a surprise for them, okay? That would have been a surprise teaching for those people. That would have been something different than they never, they, they never heard anything like that. They never heard that anyone who mourns can be blessed. They never heard the fact that there could be a blessing. They could be comfort offered to those who choose to mourn because back then it was let God remove the source of discomfort. There was nothing we could do for them. It was let God do that. And so those are key things when we think about uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 4, blessed are those who mourn. Happy are those. Again, we go back to that word blessed and what what, the, what we found from the meaning there, approved by God, blessed, happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, okay? And so now let's look at, we kind of got some, some background, some uh, things out of our mind here that are in our mind that basically uh, some teachings then compared to the teachings of Jesus and what Jesus was trying to teach them about. And so it was radically different. It was something that it was a completely different change from what they'd heard and what they'd been taught. And so now, what is Jesus really trying to teach us here? What is it that, that we can get from this? And what is he trying to pull out of, of this text here in Matthew chapter 5? When he's up on the mountain and he's, he's teaching his disciples, what is it that he's really trying to teach them? And here are some things I want us to take with us tonight. Number one, I think the blessings awaiting those who mourn is to receive approval from God. That's a major teaching here, that the blessings awaiting those who mourn is to receive approval from God, because in essence, that's what Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. They shall receive approval from God. They are happy. They are approved by God for those who mourn. Jesus tells us listen, to acquire this attitude. He says, this is something you need to put on your life. This is something you need to learn how to do. Mourn? Really? I, I don't get that, Jesus. What do you mean by that? I can just imagine his disciples' face when he began to teach them, because in their mind, they're thinking someone that has mourned, someone that's suffering, is someone that has done something bad. And so now Jesus says, this is what you need to acquire in who you are as a follower of mine. This is something you need to take on. 
And so, again, we talked about this a little bit last week, and I want to go back and kind of rephrase a little bit, go back and rethink about it, because I think it's important for us in this time to think about it as well. But happiness, as the world understands it, is conditioned by circumstances. You remember me talking about that last week, that, that the world thinks, um, you know, those who are blessed are those who have, who have things and who are doing things, and, and, and on and on the list will go. But happiness, as the world understands it, is conditioned by circumstances. If circumstances in your life are good, this is what the world says. If circumstances in your life are good, that means you're, that means you're good. If things are bad in your life, that means you've done something. That means something is not good, is not right in your mind. Um, and so, again, conditioned. So what that means is that that changes things completely now because when it's God conditioned, you can be blessed in good times and in bad times, in times of joy, in times of struggle. Why? Because it's God blessed. It's not circumstance blessed. And so that's really key here. And that's what Jesus is trying to guide them through and teach them about in their life is God is the one doing the blessing here. God is the one that's in control. God is the one that is able to do this. And so that is really, really important uh, for us to think about as well. Now, also, uh, when we're looking at this text, I think another teaching uh, that we find here is the fact that Jesus uses a word here uh, for mourn, uh, which indicates a deep, sincere, heartfelt grief. It is mourning that cannot be hid. So when you look that word up, mourn, here in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4, what Jesus is trying to teach them in, in the word here that indicates uh, patheo is that it is a deep, sincere, heartfelt grief. Basically, what Jesus is saying is this mourning that causes you to be blessed is something that cannot be hidden. Oh yeah, we cry. We cry a lot. I mean, you know, people cry sometimes every day of their life over certain things that may be going on in their life. But a lot of times we hide those emotions. We're able to hide those emotions. We, we, we may cry when we, you know, um, <laughs> When, we're, when we lay down at night because the world just weighs on our shoulders and we can't take it anymore. And then uh, we, we may cry sometimes when we get in our car, something's happened at work or something's happened at school. And so we get in our car, our car and, and, and we just break down and we begin to mourn over those things. But what Jesus is saying here is it's not like that. He's saying this is a mourning that cannot be hidden, meaning people are going to see it because you are in that state of mourning in your life. And so not only that, but also I think it's interesting here when you study this word mourn, that it is a present tense. The word is in the present tense here. So it's those who have mourned and those who continue to mourn, those who are mourning right now fit this category. And so this is a sorrow again, which, which is not hidden, um, but which emerges in, in the tears, in the confession of, of the truly penitent heart, okay? Uh, there are people who are, are sorry that they got caught in their sin, and then there's those people who know that they've done wrong and know that they have sin in their life, and they are mourning because of it, and, it's, and, and it can't be hidden. I mean, it just comes out. It just shows because they know in their mind, I've done something wrong, and therefore, I need to repent of that, and their emotions are just completely out of control because of the mourning that they're have, they have in their life. Let me ask you this question again tonight as we think about this. Is it possible for us to have great thoughts about God, but little thought for sin? Meaning that we are truly penitent. We, we repent of our sins. We are true about that. We believe that, and, and we have those thoughts. But is it possible to have great thoughts about God, but little thoughts about sin? 
Well, yeah, the answer to that is yes, it's true. It can happen and it should happen. I want to, I want to give you an example of this that I think is one of the greatest examples that we find um, in scripture. And I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter seven. And I want you to look at Paul here in Romans chapter seven, because he, he, he just gives a great example here for us to follow about it, about what is Jesus really trying to teach in Matthew chapter five and verse four. And, and here's, here's a great example of this. Um, look at what he says, Matthew chapter seven and verse number uh, 24. You remember this whole part, he was talking about the law and the sin, and he was going back and forth. I want to do what's right, but I always can't do what's right. And so here I am, and this is who I am. And so what does he call himself in Matthew 7, verse 24? He says, wretched man that I am. So what's Paul saying? Is Paul grieving there? Sounds like it. What's he grieving about? His sin that he has in his life. He knows he's a sinner. He knows his flesh is weak. He knows he wants to obey the spirit, but he also knows that he is naturally drawn over toward the fleshly side of things, doing the fleshly things. He tries with everything in him to be a spirit-filled Christian, but he naturally, like all of us, does the, the bad things, the sinful things. But notice, notice how Paul talks here. He says, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And then look at verse 25. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. Okay, so what's Paul saying? Paul is saying exactly what Jesus is trying to teach his disciples in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. It is possible for us to have great thoughts about God, but little thoughts about sin. It's possible for us to do that. It may be difficult for some more than others, but again, it is possible to do that. Paul here is just by this verse that I'm looking at, and there's other verses we could go to and look at, but looking at this verse, Paul is saying, I am a man of sin. I am a wretched man. You can almost see Paul's mourning here that he's going through, this sorry, sorrowful state that he's in uh, because of the sin that he has in his life. But again, he has some great thoughts about God as well in this text. But as we look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4, look at the fact that the end of this verse says that blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Okay? Now, there's an interesting thing here as well that I think is a great lesson for us to learn on this last part of Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 4. Okay? We talked about the mourning. We've talked about blessed. We've talked about all those different things. So let's look at the last part of this verse and focus on verse number four, for they shall be comforted. Okay, those who mourn will be comforted. Isn't that comforting to think about that when we, even in our, in our sinful state and who we are and, you know, our, our, our repentant heart that we have in our life, um, that we're, we're, we're grieved and we're mourned so, so much that people can actually see that because of the things that we, that we do in our life, like Paul was. But on the other side, it's, a, it's an encouragement to, say, to see that we're going to be comforted. And so the question is, how will those mourning because of sin be comforted? How is that even possible? How are we going to be comforted? And so that's what I want to notice as we kind of finish all this up here tonight. I want us to look at um, how are we comforted? And let me say this, if you have done any kind of study at all in Matthew chapter 5, I think this is one of the greatest lessons that Jesus teaches right here, that it is, it, it's so good to, to just dive into this and to see the lesson that Jesus is really teaching. Now, many times we read through these and we go, ah, oh, that's the Beatitudes, right? We, we know those things, bless, 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 and you're going to have this if you do this, and you're going to have, and, and so we go, we just kind of skip through that sometimes, but I want to skip through this part, because this is really good for us to take in for us tonight, and maybe one of the greatest lessons Jesus taught was when he was teaching his disciples in Matthew chapter five. He himself is how we receive comfort, okay? 
Jesus is our comforter. Now, remember, when Jesus went away, he sent a comforter to be with his disciples, okay? That was the Holy Spirit, okay? Jesus knew that he was leaving and that they would miss him, and because of that, he says, listen, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send the comforter to you, and he's going to be there with you always, and that's true. The Holy Spirit, that's his job. That's part of his job is a comforter, but also, I don't want to bypass the fact that Jesus is the ultimate comforter, okay? He himself is how we receive this comfort that he's talking about in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 4. And so how is that possible? Okay, how is that possible? Well, let's look at a few things. What comfort does Jesus, does Jesus provide us? Okay, that's a question for us, something that we could think about. What comfort, how does he comfort us? What comfort does Jesus provide us? And here's a list of, of three things um, that we could, listen, we could have a list of a thousand things, right? We could just keep going on and on about the ways he comforts us. But I want to give you three tonight because I don't want to keep you here all night. Okay, number one. He comforts us. He, pri he provides us comfort through forgiveness. Okay. Let's look at a few verses. Let's look at Acts chapter 3 and verse 19 first. Acts chapter 3 and verse number 19. And if somebody has that for me, I want you to go ahead and read it for me. And then uh, if somebody else would get Revelation 3, 5 for me, I'll let somebody else read that. Um, the first one is Acts 3, 19. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Okay. So where does those things come from? From God, right? From Jesus. Um, that, that forgiveness that happens. All right. Somebody else read Revelation 3, 5. The one who conquers will be clothed, clothed thus in white garments. I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Okay, Bob, go back to the beginning of that and read that first part of that verse again. First few words, or first few lines there. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments. Okay, so those who overcome, right? Now, if you know anything about Revelation, he's talking about in the end, he gets to the fact to where... Christians are going to eventually win the battle, right? He's, he's talking to them. He's trying to encourage them. He's trying to help them. He's trying to get them to understand this suffering that you're going through, these things that are happening right now, this persecution that you're dealing with in your life is just temporary. But in the end, those who are clothed in white are going to win the battle. And so again, he says, those who overcome, those who comfort, how do we do that? How do we overcome sin in our lives? Through the blood of Christ. How do we overcome that? Through Jesus, okay? That, that we overcome sin, we have forgiveness, we do that through Jesus. And notice in Revelation 3 and 5 there, he says that their names will never be blotted out of the book of life, okay? Those who overcome, those who conquer, all right? Now, you may have in your mind some other verses, and if you do, jot those down, but you may have some other verses that talk about forgiveness or overcoming sin through the blood of Christ. And there's many of them, right? But the point I wanted to make tonight about that is this, that it is great comfort to us in our morning state, the state we should be in when we realize and know that we have sin in our life. It's something that can't be hidden. It just, it's so overwhelming to us. It's, it's so burden is so heavy on us that it can't be hidden, that we mourn because of that. And so what Jesus says is, you're going to be comforted. How are you going to be comforted? You're going to be comforted because of forgiveness that you receive through Christ, okay? And so forgiveness is a big thing when it comes to our comfort for those who mourn. Forgiveness is huge, okay? That should be comforting for us right now to think about that every time we sin, the blood of Jesus Christ wipes that sin away. That, that blood of Christ is not something that just happens one time. 
but that that is a continual process. As we continually mourn over sin, as we continually repent of those sins, as we continually go through life sinning, that Jesus' blood is right there behind it, and it just continually cleanses our sin. That should be comforting to us. Listen, one of the greatest studies I've ever done in my life in the Bible was when I had the opportunity to go verse by verse through the book of 1 John and translate that book from Greek to English, parsing all the verbs, going through everything in that, ver in that, in that book, and doing that for all five chapters of the book of 1 John. Why was that such a comfort to me? And why was that the greatest study? Because it showed me how powerful the blood of Jesus Christ is. It showed me how much comfort as a Christian that we should have in the fact that we have a relationship with, with the man who is able to, as we sin, he continually cleanses us from that sin. Now that's comforting. And that should be comforting to us. And if you ever want a good study, go and study 1 John. Because in that verse, he talks about, in that book, especially the first chapter, he deals with those who have eternal life are those who are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus is something that continually cleanses us. And if you've been in my class on uh, Wednesday night uh, in the young adult class, you heard me say this before, that Many people today, and the reason why a lot of Christians are miserable today is because they feel like that they're in Christ, and then they sin, and they're out of Christ, and then they repent, and they're in Christ, and then they sin, and they're out of Christ, and then they repent, and they're in Christ, and then they sin, and they're out of Christ, and that's just a going back and forth life, and so what they say is, is they're so miserable in that is they just all eventually give up Christianity because they're like, well, I don't want any of that if that's all the comfort and hope and assurance I have, but instead, we have the assurance that says because of the power of the blood of Christ that, yes, God wants a relationship with us that tells us, yes, I want to have communication with you. I want you to repent of those sins. I want you to know that you're sinning. Yes, I want all those things. But what Jesus said is, is I provided a way for you through the blood of Jesus Christ that where you don't have to live in misery anymore, you don't have to go through life and say, listen, I don't know whether I'm saved or not. But instead, God said, yes, you can know that you're saved because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's comforting to us. And that should be comforting to us. Look at what he says in Romans, if you're still there, look at what he says in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 1. The text we just read that Paul was dealing with this subject about the wretched man that I am, um, who's going to save me from this life? Okay, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Paul knew he was a sinful man. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of, of, of sin. And Paul there again, he says, I'm weak, man. I'm weak when it comes to fleshly things. But notice what he says in verse eight or chapter eight and verse one. The next verse, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, what's that verse mean to you? What's condemnation? It means your sin's not going to be held against you. Right. There's none. There's no condemnation there for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's powerful. And I love that Paul put that in there because to me, that just adds on to the foundation that 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7 presents to us. And so it should be comforting to us that we have a relationship with Jesus, and it's not just a hold my hand, Jesus, as we walk through the earth, but it's a Jesus, thank you for wiping away my sins and continually wiping away my sins so that I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm in the kingdom of God or not. I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm, I'm saved or I'm not. I can go through life with my relationship with Jesus and my relationship with God and doing what I need to do on my part and God and Jesus is going to do their part. And therefore I can go through life and face eternity knowing that yes, as Paul said, my flesh is weak, but I serve the law of God with my mind, even though my flesh is weak. And I can look at that and say, yes, my flesh is weak and yes, I'm going to sin and yes, I'm going to mess up, but thanks be to God. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
And that's comforting to us. Number two, peace. How does Jesus comfort us? He gives us peace. And we just talked about that. And we just went through all that. He gives us forgiveness of sins. Therefore, because we have forgiveness of sins, we have peace in our life. Uh, look at Luke chapter 7 and verse 50. Somebody want to grab that? And somebody else want to grab John 16, 33. The first one is Luke 7, 50. And the one after that is John 16, 33. Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Okay, why did, why did he say go in peace? Because her faith had saved her, right? And that's what he was saying. That is a peaceful part of the Christian walk, of having that Christian faith is that peace that we have because of our faith in Christ. Okay, John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Okay, so in the world, in doing worldly things, you will have peace. Is that what he said? No, everybody should be shaking their head no, because it's not what he said, right? I'm trying to keep you on your toes here. That ain't what he said. <laughs> he said, you will have peace in me, in Christ, okay? But also notice what he said in verse 33. He says um, that, wherever I'm at here, if I find my place, he says, I have, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Do we have tribulation in the world? We all better shake our head yes, right? We do. We have it. Okay, we're right in the middle of it. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Now, where do you want to be? Do you want to be in doing worldly things and in the world where there's tribulation? Or do you want to be in a relationship with somebody that has already overcome the world and that has promised you that there is peace in you, in him, if, if you're in him, if you're in that relationship with you, in him, okay, with him. And so, again, that should give us comfort about our relationship with Jesus. We find peace in it. And why do we find peace in it? Well, if nothing else, he's promised peace because he said, listen, in the world, you're going to find tribulation, but have no fear because I have already overcome the world, okay? Right now, we may go through some tribulation, and we may go through some things in our life, some struggles in our life, but what's ahead in the relationship we have with Jesus makes it all worth it going through those things, and so that gives us comfort, okay? Okay. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. How are they comforted? With forgiveness. They're comforted with peace that they find in Christ. And then finally, exhortation. Okay? Look with me at James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Somebody read for me verse 6 through 10. And if you're Leah or Jordan, you can do sign language, then you'll have to just. James 1. All right. James chapter 4, and somebody read verse 6 through 10 for me. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he said, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee free from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to grow. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Okay. See right there, Jesus, the writer of James, James already knew the coronavirus was coming, right? Cleanse your hands. He knew it was coming. That's a bad preacher joke, but we're going to go with it, right? But he knew it was coming. But again, what is the point of James chapter 4, verse 6 through 10? The point I'm trying to make is that if we will humble ourselves before the hand of God, he's going to lift us up. And that's comforting to us to know those things. You want to be comforted? 
be in Christ. That's where true comfort is found, is in Christ. We find forgiveness, we find peace, and he will lift us up if we humble ourselves and come into that relationship. The Christian does not go through life, should not, let me say that because I don't know, there are some that seem to tend to have this, but the Christian should not go through life with a long face, with a sour look, right? Why? Because of the comfort that we find in Christ as his child, as someone that is a Christian, okay? Once forgiven in sin from sin, and once we have that relationship with Jesus, we receive comfort. And we have comfort because of that relationship that we have in Christ. So again, Jesus up on the mountain, he's teaching his disciples about Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. And what he's teaching them is that those who mourn, sinful, mourning over sin, mourning over things, whatever. He's like, he's saying to us, we will be comforted because of the comfort that we find in Christ. Okay. Any comments, questions, anything you want to add to it? Anything you want to take away from it? If you do, you take away from Bible because it was straight up Bible. <laughs> what else? Anything? I see your ugly face, Mike. You don't have to adjust the camera. <laughs> you know, one goes through your Christian life knowing that you, you can have that peace and you can have that forgiveness. But the exhortation thing, um, that last point that we covered, the exhortation, mm -hmm. I don't know that we recognize that or, or take that into account, that he exhorts us mm -hmm. um, to live in Christian ways so that we can have that peace yeah. and forgiveness. And he, you know, and, and he lifts us up. I mean, it's something that he is, you know, he does for us. He, he will lift us up. Um, he'll lift us up in his kingdom. He will lift us up and say, look, I mean, I know that I can just imagine the fact of how proud that God is when we become his children, when we obey him and we do what he asks us to do. And he understands and he knows that in order for us to do that because of who we are and, who, and what kind of people we are. I mean, let's just admit it, right? Paul said it. He said it for us all that we're weak. We tend to go flesh. We tend to think that way. And so when God sees that one of his people has taken advantage of the salvation plan that he has laid out, I, I can just imagine how he just lifts us up because of that. Um, you know, when we think about um, the prodigal son and, and the, the example, the lesson that was given there when, that, when he came back home and the party that was thrown because of him coming back home to the father, um, I can just imagine the, the rejoicing in heaven because of when someone is saved or when somebody comes back home um, as well. And so we're exalted because of that. Okay. What other thoughts do we have tonight? All right. Well, um, if anybody has any prayer requests, um, I'm looking around me right now. Usually I, when I'm at my desk at home, I like to have all kinds of pens sitting around. I don't have any on me. So I'll try to remember as many as I can. How about that? Does anybody have any prayer requests? There you go. Me. Thanks. <laughs> See, if we all had set it up right and we all had a pen, then Jerry could have passed it to me and then I could have passed <laughs> it to Dan and Dan could have passed it to Leah. Leah, you know. <laughs> Throw one down the window, Jerry, and see if he can <laughs> see if he can grab it. <laughs> Do you grab it, Wendell? He threw it. <laughs> oh. Any prayer request? Okay. We'll definitely continue to pray for the elders and deacons. Somebody on Facebook said that. Okay. What else? saw that June Davenport passed away today. I don't know. I guess I don't know her, but she was a shut-in at Goodlessville. So we'll pray for her family as well. 
Anybody on Facebook have a prayer request they'd like to type in? All right, well, let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day and thank you for the blessings that you bless us with. Uh, Father, we're thankful tonight for uh, so many things that, that you continually give us. We're thankful for our homes and uh, Father, we're thankful for the food that we have and for our jobs. And Father, we're just so thankful for that. And um, we just know that God, you continue to bless us in, in our everyday walk of life. And the biggest blessing that we have and that we need to recognize, Father, is the salvation that we have through Jesus Christ. And we're just thankful for that blessing. Again, um, I'm just uh, thankful tonight for, for prayer, for the opportunity that we have to come before you at any time that we want to and to approach your throne. And, and God, that's something that we should never take for granted, but be very thankful for. Father, tonight, there's probably so many people that we're thinking about that are in our hearts and that our minds, Father, as we bow our heads. And Father, you know each and every situation that goes on in this world, and we pray that you will bless them. Father, right now, we're praying for our leaders of this country. Pray, Father, for the decisions that they make. We pray that they will seek you for guidance in their life. Uh, Father, we pray uh, that as we're going through this virus, that there's a lot of stress uh, right now on our leaders, on our church leaders, on, on just uh, people in general, Father, the anxiety and the worry and the depression that people face because of it. We pray that you'll bless them. We pray that you will uh, put your hands on them and help them, Father, in every way that you can. Um, God, tonight we pray for our leaders at Goodlettsville. Uh, we pray that you will continue to bless them with wisdom and strength at this time, as we know that uh, they are making some very difficult decisions um, and some more that are ahead of them, Father. And we know that it's decisions that not, doesn't make everyone happy. Father, they have to make the best decisions that they know how to make that are according to your will. Uh, Father, we are mindful of the Davenport family and the loss of June, and we pray that you will just bless that family right now and give them strength and, strength and comfort as well. Uh, Father, uh, we continue to pray for Marie Williams and her family as well and the loss of her son, and we pray that you will uh, strengthen them and bless them as well. Father, we're thankful for uh, dad's surgery, and we're thankful that it went well, and we pray for his recovery um, as he continues to do that. And, and for physical therapy that's coming up, we just pray for him to be able to go through that and have success. Uh, Father, there's probably many others that have had successful surgeries or that have uh, gotten over uh, this virus or may even be battling with it. And we pray that you will forgive, that you will help them um, as well, Father, and that you will uh, just heal them in every way that you can. Uh, Father, we are uh, mindful of those that uh, may not have a relationship with you right now. We pray that we will be a light to them and we will be uh, we can say something, Father, to our friends and our families that will help them to uh, be curious and ask questions about you and about the relationship that they can have. Uh, Father, we are thankful for the Goodlessville congregation, and we're thankful for the many servants that, they, that we have. And Father, we're uh, just so blessed here. Uh, and Father, we pray that we will always be a congregation, a family that looks to you and that continues to teach your word and, the, and does the things that you would have us to do. Father, thank you for Jesus. And we ask you to forgive us of our sins in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All righty. Appreciate you guys. And um, we will, those who are on Facebook, thank you for joining us tonight. Hope you enjoyed the view of Zoom so you can see everybody's lovely face. Um, sorry, Leah, I just now got it but I'll put it on there, okay? Um, everybody else saw that too, I guess, the prayer request that Leah had. Uh, request a prayer for her friend, okay? Um, so Facebook, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna jump off of there real quick and then Zoom, if you'll hang on a minute, um, we'll be back on there in just a second, hang on.